Nation. So, hey everybody, this is Frank here, Online Gamer, coming at you with some more League of Legends. Today we're going to be watching the NESL Premier League. This is going to be one of the games in the group stages. Alongside me is Rapid. This is going to be Barry's Bananas, which you see at the bottom of your screen right now, spawning purple side, versus the blue team, which is going to be Team Lazura. One thing that I noticed in the beginning, and I'm going to try to call this properly right now, is the fact that, uh, first of all, Janna was banned and Cassiopeia from Team Berry's Bananas, which I think is a great way to go. I think banning Cassiopeia and then picking Galio is really, really smart because Galio's only real counter mid lane is Cassiopeia, I find. Um, there's a couple other ones that come close, but nobody really does it quite like Cassiopeia. Um, but I'm going to call it right now. Lazura did a great thing in picking uh, Alistar first and foremost, and then... Uh, faking that he was going to be support and then going Tarek. So my call right now is going to be that Alistar ganks mid very, very early on. All right, yeah, like you said, this is Lazur versus Barry's Bananas, and it looks like we do already have people watching the stream, so shout-outs to whoever's out there. And uh, a little bit of a history behind Barry's Bananas. Uh, to let you guys know what this tournament is, this is the uh, group stages for the third season of the uh, NESL's Premier League, so uh, everybody in you know the different groups play one another. And actually, first blood may go down here. The stun is off there. The pulverize is down, and will DT777 go down? Slushy picks up first blood as he just walks right into this bush. And from personal experience, I can definitely tell you guys I've done the same thing. So I know what that feels like, and it does not feel very good. Uh, back to introductions for the team. Barry's Bananas are, you know, they play in a lot of gopher lols. They usually get past, you know, first couple rounds. They're a solid 15, 1600 team. And uh, as far as uh, Barry's Barry Banana is, you know, the namesake for the team. He definitely plays a lot of Twitch, builds him really attack speed heavy, and uh, is, does pretty well with him. Has about a 60% win ratio with uh, about 75 ranked games. So he definitely knows what he's doing as far as that Twitch pick. It's not like a massive troll or anything else. He's going to stealth. He's going to go in here on this blue, but not find anybody else. And that may allow Barry Bananas to uh, go ahead and pick that up. Actually, Olaf is rolling up there. So Talandra may actually bite off a little bit more than he can chew. They see him walk by there, so they know no one's going to start blue buff and that's going to be a pretty easy counter juggle to start the game for them and here we go you can see the alistar on the opposite end of things is going to take wolf so that's definitely going to be a small advantage there as you can see the enemy team um berries bananas are going to be just chilling out on that blue buff waiting for it to spawn whereas the wolf camp has gone down here and one blue wolf is going to be remaining so scarn are going to be left there with a little bit Oh, but treat. Slushy's rolling around there. They're going to switch immediately off onto Slushy. Ignite goes off, Exhaust goes off, but the stun onto Grand Sky Doom will probably get Slushy out of there alive. And now that Talander is coming down here, the blue buff is actually successfully counter juggled, but uh, that is two very offensive summoners blown. And now Slushy's going to have to go back to mid. But meanwhile, Big McLarge Huge, probably the uh, most uh, grandiose name I've ever seen. It will be running mid lane on what it looks like is going to be an AP Lulu. Yeah, this is going to be kind of whack. Um, I definitely think this is uh, the way you want to go if you're going to be playing against a team like this. Use your solo lane to go up against, uh, or use your solo lane to pick a really strange champion. Specifically one that's the newest out there. Definitely a good way to go because it's really hard to play against something that you're not sure about. So uh, definitely I think that's a good way to go. One thing to note though is that the flash is still up for Slushy. He could have used that at any point, but um, he opted not to. And you can see here Barry Banana is going to be going top here with Skarner. And Talandra, I don't know if he's going to be too aware of this. Out he comes with the red buff on him. And I think, yeah, Talandra knew what was going on there. He saw the end of the cloak from Twitch. Really, really bad play there, actually, unfortunately, for Barry Banana at level 1 with that red buff. Um, not going to work out too well for him as Galio is going to try to hold bottom lane with this Roman Twitch. Yeah, and that's just really rough. He just misplayed that situation a little bit, and uh, that made all the difference as uh, Twitch is still sitting around at level 1. He's just roaming. He's going to try for another gank, and will we see it be as successful as it was last time? Slushy does have still have his flash up, and his ignite is just off of cooldown, so he could actually just like turn around and burst down Barry Banana if his shield was up, uses his shield to block most of that poison damage, and so there's not really going to be very much going on. Right there, bottom lane, Galio is going to be able to wave through that relatively effectively, but uh, he's getting harassed down really, really badly by a Digester, and there he goes, he's dropping that super hard mid lane! 
Brutal. Yeah, that was uh, pretty crazy there. Twitch actually saw Alistar coming in there, but with the stun coming out from Scion, unfortunately not going to uh, work out too well for him. But top lane, though, Talandra trades kills with the Warwick, which is actually ridiculously impressive considering Warwick's sustain in lane. And now you've got Twitch at level 2 cloaking here away from Scion. And if, uh, if Slushy is able to get up his shield and go at this um, Twitch, I definitely think that's going to spell doom for him and here we go in comes the uh the bull here with the pulverize gonna be making sure to headbutt that back and there it is picking up that kill Ooh, and that headbutt right there at the end for the kill is just brutal looking twitch really didn't stand a chance and already barry bananas uh strategy is going a little bit awry so big mclard's huge needs to watch out there for the alistar gank but Ted Sigils just gonna roll around there to bottom lane and he has been incredibly successful as far as ganks are concerned but he will actually be walking through a ward a really good idea here from dt777 but Ted Sigils does not afraid of anything he's gonna walk right by the ward and give up the kill to Digester, who combined with the stun there from Atomic, was able to pick up the kill under turrets. So, not a whole lot of things that going right so far here for Barry Bananas, but Twitch is coming in stealth into the top lane, and will Talandra actually see what's up? He's actually going to try to trade with Stevie Starfruit, and uh, I'm not sure if he knows what's up as far as Twitch is concerned, but man... Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just laughing at the fact that these two guys, I think they tried to get a clan name started up here. Stevie Starfruit and Barry Banana. Uh, kind of cute, but yeah, that definitely did not work out too well. And now with Twitch at level 2, this is looking really, really tough here. He did just hit level 3, so this could be a kill on Talandra. Oh, Talandra not looking in a good position. And that will be the second kill of the game for Barry's Bananas. And uh, I don't know, as Twitch start to kick into gear, could we see the beginning of what I would consider a long comeback? Maybe, as Switch once he starts snowballing, snowballs really hard. But uh, he's got to get to that point first, and uh, as squishy as he is, uh, it's going to take a few more successful ganks like that to pull that off. Yeah, and you got to keep in mind that he's actually not the one who's getting the, the kill there. Um, that I think the first one did go down to Warwick as well. Um, yeah, Twitch now sitting on one death, one assist. So that's... Oops, I'm throwing a whip around my HUD there. But yeah, not working out too well there. And here down at bottom lane, you see Skarner coming in for a gank. That's not going to work too well. In fact, um, the Jester's actually going to try to turn that one around. Um, getting a lot of auto attacks here, and fr from what I've seen, a lot of the Jester play, he loves to use that heal to bait. You can see that's still online, and there's no way that they're going to pick up that kill down at bottom lane. And Alistar coming in here as well, with the slow going forward there, fl flashing forward from Atomic, trying to look for that stun, which would have certainly spelled doom there for one of those characters. And Scion now stepping in here. This is a really, really heavy action lane right now. Oh, and Ted Sigil's just tanking the turret. They're going in there onto Galio. The stun is out. The knockup is good. And the Ignite will pick up the kill there. Actually, Digester's auto is picking that up. And that will be one more kill and the first turret of the game for Lazura. And it looks like this is definitely a good spot to go for the dragon here. Um, Digester, yeah, yeah, they were both, it looked like Atomic and Digester just traded turns there going back. Um, but definitely not a good idea here. I think going for dragon might be a good call. Although with everybody stepping into lane and you've got a Twitch roaming, it might not be the greatest idea. So yeah, Digester is going to go back here. And uh, I think, though, everybody kind of needs to stick around. Skarner's going to spot this one, though. Digester's going to get jumped on here. But with four characters right around the corner here, um, Grand Sky Doom is going to have to back off. Though he's going to keep trying to mess with these guys, throwing out his Q and just trying to get these guys to slow down. This is actually kind of hilarious to watch. Yeah, Atomic and Digester both stopped from going back. This could actually be... Pretty bad, and the heal is up there for Digester. We will see it used pretty soon. Yeah, there it goes, saving Atomic's life. Now, Grand Sky Doom is really low, but that will be the kill there on uh, Tarek. But uh, DT777 actually gets altered there by Lulu and will be able to get out of there with his bulwark online. Barry Banana will fall in the ensuing chaos, but Big McLarg's huge now is going to get hit by that. Olaf Axe getting slowed. Will he get hit by the second one? Yes, he does. But DT777 is coming back in. Will he actually land the slow? Big McLarg's huge needs to get really big right now. Actually, enough of a uh, harassment there to get himself out of there alive. Warwick's coming down. Slushy is a cutesy little bunny, and uh, that will allow, uh, well, both teams to pretty much just, like, not do anything. You know, I, I tell Slushy that he's a cutesy little bunny all the time, regardless of whether he's got the uh, Lulu ability on him. I actually don't, I haven't played Lulu, so I don't know what uh, key that corresponds to, but Slushy is always a cutesy little bunny in my heart. But uh, yeah, they end up going a little bit too aggressive there, I think, was Team Lazura. They did end up having things go in their favor, but I think there were a lot of opportunities 
where uh, Barry's Bananas could have really picked up some uh, a, a kill or two as they uh, did stop them from going back and they were uh, pretty low in health for a while there. And not to mention the Summoner Heal got used at a pretty um, not uh, preferable timing there as well. But it looks like now switching where you've got, I think, Olaf's going to head down bottom lane. Yeah, he's, he is down there and you've got the duo lane up top. Oh, and actually they went in on Atomic. They didn't see Slushy coming up from behind or Ted Stickle. And that is an incredibly dead Twitch. Yeah, and, and the CS actually here going in favor as well for Team Lazuri here. They're both, they're, you got three characters above 40 CS and only one of them, um, actually only one of them above 30 right now for Team Barry Bananas. And uh, that's really going to spell doom for them. You've got 20 CS on Twitch, three deaths and no kills. So he's sitting on two Doran's Blades and level one boots versus... Um, it kind of looks like two Doran's Blades and level one boots, but that's definitely a BF sword. So uh, a huge, huge advantage in terms of who's got uh, the better range AD right now. And mid lane, actually, Olaf getting jump jumping on big McLarge. Huge here. Is he going to pick up the kill? No, he's not going under tower and actually getting turned around here by this Lulu. Yeah, man, he went in there and then he decided, oh, wait, I'm not, oh, wow, he could actually go down here. Lulu is on the hunt. Will this be enough to pick up the kill? And yes, looks like they both will go down there. Thanks to the Lulu ult, you know, letting her live just long enough to pick up the kill, but then falling down herself. Top lane, a lot of action happening there as well. As a flash over the wall from the Jester, he does get picked off, though, by, I think, the poison from Twitch. And then Atomic fail flashing over the wall right behind Golem Camp there. So 9 to 6 now, and a 4k gold advantage here for Team Lazura. Um, I think they're really getting out of themselves caught out here. Going up against a Twitch Warwick and a Skarner with a very low health misfortune definitely did not go in their favor there. So things got uh, turned around really, really well there. Yeah, I think the Jester says it best. Twitch is starting to get a little bit OP there. And by OP, I mean he has about 2,000 gold to his name right now. So he's uh, not exactly the richest little Twitch. Has about 26 last hits. As he has been kind of splitting the jungle. But uh, his roaming has kind of paid off. You see he's been part of three kills. So that is about half the kills there for uh, Barry's Bananas. And uh, I guess that's you know what they need to do. They really need to have Twitch come back in this game, start to get off a little bit of his, uh, you know, shenanigan alicia's results, and uh, that is uh, probably the only way that they're going to get back in this. Twitch just has to make himself useful, otherwise they're just going to be playing a 4v5. Yeah, and uh, the, the lane situation here is really, really weird. Once that bot the lane and top lane, actually, Skarn are going to get picked off here as well, with the uh, with Talandra just smashing down on that, following up the Tarek stun but um like i was saying before the, the lane situation is kind of funky right now and it's it's actually not going in the favor of lazura as we notice that the, the kills are starting to go a little bit more you know not so one-sided dragon will go down here and i think that's what they needed to do uh, in team lazura i think they are a little bit better of a coordinated team and actually mid lane here warwick's gonna jump on to slushy not really do that much damage though he did have red buff ticking but a lot of damage now coming out lulu's gonna have to pop his her ult onto this Warwick who does get ignited so uh, but he's gonna get away there just fine but yeah that that being a better coordinated team I think going for that earlier dragon would have been in their better interest but now they're gonna pick it up and you can see the advantage that that brought with now a 6k gold advantage at the uh, 12 minute mark or 12 and a half minute mark yeah, like you said, it's so early in this game, but already so many kills, and it looks like actually Stevie Starfruit gets out of there alive, and the health advantage is actually, uh, well, not on Skarner right now, as he it does get picked up, but now Big McLarge, Huge, and D777 are in the danger zone, but it looks like they will be able to make it out of there alive. Big McLarge, Huge actually is going to get stunned and goes down to the true damage there from Talandra, so 12 to 6 now for the kill. Slushy barely making it out of there alive, but he does himself get out. And uh, now doubling up the kills for uh, for Barry Bananas. So I don't know. Twitch is actually scouting out Slushy. He really wants to jump in for that kill. He has plenty of stealth left, but uh, Slushy's in the middle of his team. So I don't think Twitch really wants to do that. Yeah, and it looks like this mid lane is going to get pushed down here. Jester actually takes two tower shots, a little bit unnecessarily, but now blue buff up for grabs as well for uh, the enemy team's blue buff. And the warding situation here definitely going in favor of Team Lazura. they got a ward on blue buff, and they've got a ward right outside that Wraith Camp rush, and that's definitely the way you want to go, as well as uh, two other wards right on the opposite side of blue. And this is one thing that they do very well, is if they're going to... 
have a lot of action on one side, they're going to ward that side. And typically early game, that action's going to happen bottom lane, and then eventually it'll switch up to top lane. But uh, with that tower being cracked so early top lane, the team fighting situation now is just all over the place. And um, although I think at first it went in favor of Team Berry's Bananas, now I think Lazura is starting to put their stuff together and uh, figure out what they got to do, and it's definitely working for them. Yeah, pretty much all stealthies are kind of like those really good pub stompers. You know, if given a random situation, they can really turn things around and uh, have a lot of shenanigans up their sleeves. But when you're going up against a team as professional and coordinated as Lazura, there's not a whole lot you can pull on them as far as uh, those, you know, mischievous, uh, you know, devious... Uh, schemes are concerned, and that's definitely what Twitch relies on, but as mischievous as they may be, it looks like Lazira, like you said, is starting to come together, and once they do, I don't think there's going to be a whole lot that various bananas can do to stop them. Yeah, they're they're really picking stuff up right now on Twitch. Like you mentioned, actually, he is a pretty good pub stomper, and that's I, I have to assume why the win ratio is so great for him, because it does work very well. And actually, it looks like here, Warwick's going to get peeled off here by the Scion and Alistar combination. Skarner, though, going to step in here, level 7, and the level 7 Galio as well. So you can see that uh, getting caught out there a little bit is Slushy and the, and, uh, sorry, t uh, Ted Stickles there. And with the ward actually being dropped down there, they're going to see all these characters running around. Twitch is stealth right now, and no pink ward and no oracles, but here they go, getting a lot of damage off there. Missing the Q, though, from Ted Stead, it's getting a little bit sloppy. Great ultimate there, but a better ultimate in return from Galio. A huge fight coming out here. Lulu looks like she might go down here soon. There she goes, down to the Axe and that's always a cool way to get killed, but in Galio might get picked off here as well. Is the E ready? No, but the Axe throw is, and T Talandra is going to pick up that kill as well. Now he's going to start kiting around here and hopefully pick up another kill. Skarner, level 8, not high enough, and Twitch is going to have to turn back around here after picking up that kill on Alistar. So it looks like that did go in the favor of Team Berry's Bananas there, but really, really funky trade there, and... Uh, now just Twitch and Warwick left alive, but Slushy's now going to step back into the fray here. And this is going to be a really, really weird situation over the next two minutes, as uh, it's going to be difficult to find a good clump. But again, double flash coming out there, and boom goes the shield, so Twitch Ooh. will get picked up. Oh, that was so painful to watch. Like, Twitch had his stealth, like, 99% complete, but the persistent damage kept him unstealth, and you could just see them chain stun, and uh, then eventually drop that shield. That would have mattered if Twitch was stealth or not. He was going to explode, just like Scion's shield did. So now there is actually an Oracles here for Grand Sky Doom. He knows that there are wards all over the jungle, especially this nice little Orion's belt of wards up through the red buff, which is actually still up. So if Skona rolls around up there, he's going to be able to pick off those wards. And so, I don't know. I don't think an Oracles is necessarily what you want to get when you're this far behind. And by this far behind, I mean they have just closed in on uh, about a 7,000 uh, gold lead. Um, even though they did come back there to a 5-kill deficit, although now it's uh, back up to 6. So it's uh, still... Still relatively close. Uh, like I said, Twitch is still the big X factor. If he starts to, you know, get his uh, his train running, it's going to be really hard for Lazer to stop them. But with as many skills as they have, you know, as far as click stuns and then the Alistar, Twitch is going to have a really rough time doing any form of carrying this game. Yeah, and I, I, one thing to note here is that MF actually is it, it catching me off at how low her CS is right now. 97 CS, typically not something you see on uh, any MF, let alone to Jester's MF. Um, I definitely think that there's been a lot of weird situations this game, and it's kind of throwing him off. He is up to three kills, of course, but with only that BF sword, I had to note that he does have 1500 in the bank right now, and here comes a lot of damage onto this tower. Not going to be enough here, though, and Slushy is going to take some damage, though, but popping that shield is going to help to uh, alleviate some of that pain. And uh, Galio actually throwing out his Q, making sure to pop that, uh, that shield. And actually, level 7... Alistar for Ted Stickles, not something that he wants to have right now, as he is actually by far the lowest level character in the game right now. I think Alistar is kind of a weird jungle, and this might be their testing grounds for him, and I don't think Ted Stickles is going to leave this one saying, hey, let's do this again, because he's a really, really slow jungler, and I don't think that Ted Stickles is having a really good time um, adjusting to this. 
You know, Alistar actually missed the ward there from Barry's Bananas. That Lazura did just walk over, so that's going to be a little bit of info that, uh, you know, they will have that Lazura will not. A uh, ward will be dropped there in the bush by the Wraith. But there comes the initiate. The Shirelli's is popped. Big Big Large Hughes gets exhausted, but they will spe speed himself away from there. Uh, so no kills picked up, but the kill on the turret top as Barry's Bananas uh, do backdoor that successfully. Um, now it looks like even though Twitch is split up, Atomic getting bursted down below half health and this turret will fall making it four turrets to one in favor of Lazura but there goes in the initiate from Alistar the Atomic actually will go down there as well a Stevie Starfruit getting bursted down but then saved by the old DT 777 will fall in exchange Talandra dropping down dangerously low Grand Sky Doom will fall there instead of picking up the kill there on Talandra and there goes Warwick as well so that is four for one in favor of Lazura and now I don't know, man. It looks like Lazura will push in onto the mid turret, and there's not a whole lot that various bananas can do. There comes in the exhaust. Here goes Twitch. Will he be effective at picking up at least one kill? Gets one. Will he get a second? No. Ace. Goes down, and that is the ace for Team Lazura. Yeah, and if I think anyone deserved to have to have that banner put up and say that they scored an ace, it was definitely the Jester there. Picking up the triple kill, and I think the triple kill was deserved for him as well, as that ultimate caught four characters in it for a very, very long duration. Now looking at the gold here, went from three and two to seven and two, and now has 4,000 gold in the bank roughly. So make sure, or definitely keep an eye on what items the Jester goes back to shop for. I have to assume it's going to be a um, an Infinity Edge or at least a Bloodthirster and then moving right into a Phantom Dancer. I think it's going to be the way that uh, he opts to go here. So we're going to see exactly what comes out there, but a huge amount of kills now for the Jester. Uh, scumbag Slushy was racing racing to Jester for the bottom farm, and uh, the Jester was using as much strut as he possibly could, but uh, Slushy just walked up there, exploded over everything, and uh, took all of that luscious, luscious farm. So now the Jester will go back, and we will see what he opts to pick up. He's probably going to go for that Infinity Edge, and then maybe a Zeal next. Oh, I'm so good at this game. <laughs> Yeah, that's definitely the way he wants to go. And now we got to see, though, is he going to pick up the green elixir? Typically, when you have the eye edge and the zeal, um, that's really a spot that you don't want to be in because you have to consider, like, you have to debate whether or not it's a good idea to get the green pod. Definitely, if you have eye edge PD, that's a way to go. Ooh, it looks like Lulu's going to get caught out here. And down. Ooh. Oh, whoa, well, what? What? Yeah. What is this? Oh, wow, that's not going to be enough there. But, uh, yeah, and now actually three characters there coming in to save. But they're only going to find Lulu's corpse. Alistar comes in with a pulverize and looks for the headbutt, but I think he realized that he would have headbutted Twitch over the wall to safety. And there's the uh, Shirelias as well. But, yeah, so like I was saying, definitely um, when you get PD, you want a green elixir, but he's just he just held on to quite a bit of gold actually there, but I don't, excuse me, I don't think it's going to matter all that much at this uh, point of the game as it is really, really one-sided right now. There we go, the exhaust out on Grand Sky Doom. He's actually going to get a headbutt into safety, but Stevie Starfruit, the uh, partner in crime to Barry Banana, will actually fall down there. Where is Twitch and what is he doing? He's actually coming up from behind. He has a double dagger. And uh, Slushy's actually going to get picked off here by the turret. One more shot will pick up the kill there. Dead Sigil's headbutting Grand Sky Doom back. And now Atomic's not really in the best position. But Barry's Banana will go down. Grand Sky Doom drops his ult. But that probably would have been better used on Talandra. who's just kind of attacking minions for the win. And now Grand Sky Doom, even though he had higher health at one point, is going to go down to the true damage from Talandra, who actually almost dies to turret. But also picks up the ace. And uh, that will be... Probably the game as one Nexus turret is down and the next one could fall if Lazura decides to push their advantage. Yeah, and Warwick is actually dancing next to the Nexus currently, um, using his Howl to spot these guys out, but uh, that's not going to be enough there. And I definitely think it was a good play there, though, from Talandra. He went off to the side, he started healing himself up with that auto attack as much as he possibly could, as he does have the... Um, Riddle's Lantern, and especially with the Spirit Passage, healing himself up pretty quickly, and then going in there, just having enough health to pick up that Skarner, and waiting actually to auto-attack underneath that turret was a great idea too, just so he could use that E, and it looks like actually Atomic, oh no, he should have just let it go, um, it looks like the slow coming up from Talandra in that axe throw, is it going to be enough though? No it's not, Warwick's going to jump over the wall there, and Atomic using his ultimate, trying to heal himself up there with his own heal, not going to be enough there as well. As Slushy now getting in a bad spot and ultimate going on Twitch. 
that's the biggest rat I ever saw, but here we go. Slushy is going to get picked off here as well. Getting turned into a bunny, and he, like we said before, he's a very cute bunny. But uh, Those yeah. throws, man. Master ball status right here. He just, you know, you throw it out, and uh, you can't help but catch somebody. Ted Stick is actually jumping in the middle. Will the Jester actually be the hero of the day? It looks like he will actually go down, and now Ted Stickles is the only member for Lazura left alive for not very long. He will fall down. That's a counter ace by Barry's Bananas. It's 28 to 19. They're almost 10 kills down, and they just aced Lazura and will pick up the Baron after off of this uh you know galio needs to make sure not to get die to that but that will be the ace and the baron and with super minions in the base you know they're still at a disadvantage but oh my goodness definitely you know making the most out of a bad situation and doing an amazing job coming back yeah this is uh, kind of wild and i definitely have to say that there's some sloppiness here going on from team lazura they got caught out and it was all because if atomic just wouldn't have moved they wouldn't have gotten ace. Like literally that's where the snowball effect started happening. If he wouldn't have moved, he would have went back and then nobody on Barry's Bananas would have even considered going to Baron. They went over to Red, uh, in a group of three to red buff just so they could get red buff and uh, Atomic was actually really close to going back. So that was kind of silly there. And uh, you know, it just goes to show how those little things can just turn into really, really big problems. Um, now with the Oracles though, Tarek is definitely still gonna be work, doing some work for his team. And, uh, of course, with that Shirelia's, it's going to be a pretty huge factor as well. And now they're clumped up, and now things, I think, are going to go very, very well for Team Lazura if they can get a pretty decent engage off. All right, the Jester, and actually Slushy is very low as well. And here comes the Initiate. Will Ted Sickles be able to disengage fast enough? Uh, D777 will actually catch three, but then be instantly stunned away. Slushy actually actually going to go down. The ult is off on Twitch. He is in the very back. He gets exhausted immediately. Will Talonera be actually will go down there? Uh, it looks like Barry's Bananas will fall to Ted Sickles, but now they're going to jump onto the Jester. Grand Sky Doom taking about as much damage as he can. And uh, now the Jester's doing such a good job kiting in the very back. Big Big Large, huge needs to be careful as he's going to get dropped down very low as well. Stevie Starfruit is out of mana and now D77 and company will be forced to use Galio's, uh, you know, uh, Gust to get out of there, but will he actually get out? No, the excellent crit there from a Misfortune will pick up the kill. Actually, Big Big Large Huge goes back in the brush right there by the turret and Jester turning that fight around, making it even, going two for two there. And now it uh, looks like uh, Lazura will pick up one more turret in their ever never ending quest. But uh, Ted Sickles gets altered there by Grand Skydoom. Could he go down? Will we see a Hex go off there? He will actually get popped immediately. And now uh, Atomic and Jester really need to get out of Dodge as they definitely don't need to throw this game one more time. Barry Bananas actually gets chugged there thanks to that Terex stun and now Stevie Starfruit could go down as well will we actually see him fall the red buff slow is on but it looks like he will be able to get back to uh to the nexus in time yeah and this is you know one of those things I think Ted Stickles is doing something that he's not used to and I actually think Slushy's doing something that uh I don't think he's actually played all that much especially not in tournament play and it looks like Atomic's gonna get caught out here as well but the Jester certainly is playing something that he's used to and he's doing exactly what he needs to do he's finding situations where he can just pick up kills as as best as he possibly can because the coordination is really what's the problem right now for team lazura and uh, things are really getting turned around on them now only 12k ahead i mean it is 12k but um that advantage certainly could have been a lot better and slushy um in, before that fight took like six or seven tower shots unnecessarily and uh, nobody was really helping him take out that turret so Things just got really just blown up in their face, and uh, I cannot wait for an actually well-coordinated team fight to go off here because they're really not giving their AD carry the <laughs> opportunities that he needs. Yeah, Ted Stickles is actually triple potted right now. I'm not sure how many Alistars you see glowing that brightly, but uh, he actually did go for all three potions, and after filling up all six of his item slots, he really didn't want to turn any of his gold for five items, and he did actually buy three of them into uh, other items, so he's just going to keep with them and uh, opt for triple potions. But uh, So Slushy's going to be running around mid lane, and like you said, Slushy did take a lot of early damage to start off that fight, and so hopefully... That's not going to be the case this time around. Yeah, and you can see there the stun going up from Slushy. I think that's a good call. Just cracking the Banshee's Veil from onto uh, Skarner. So now he's going to be without Banshee's Veil for a little while longer. And uh, we're going to see, though, they're going to push in. 
Where is the coordination here? It looks like Alistar not in the fray. Talandra going off to Wraith Camp. Atomic leading the charge here with only Slushy behind. And you've got Misfortune off down middle lane somewhere. So if, if Atomic gets grabbed here, that's going to be an Oracles and a character dead for the the impending team fight, which is certainly going to happen here. And I definitely think that it would be in Team Barry's Bananas to have engaged at some point in, in there. And there we go. There's the engage, but with uh, the Jester in the fray there. Going to use a great ultimate, but so much damage here going off onto this team. Lazura is going to lose, uh, get pick up the Twitch. Twitch is going to down Scion, and it looks like here finally, with a little bit of coordination and with the Jester on his main character now, uh, they are going to pick this one up, but Skarner's going to get picked up there as well in the background. With Atomic actually now focusing down the um, the Lulu, it looks like she will not die, but enough damage there coming out, and like I mentioned, they needed to give the Jester that opportunity, and without being inside that ultimate, the Jester had that great opportunity and definitely used it very, very well, and this is definitely going to be GG here. Wow, and actually that Moonflare, Spellblade, Abyssal Scepter, Haunting Guys, and Sword Shoes on Big with Large Huge. So if you guys are looking to play some AP new, uh, Lulu, that's apparently how you do it as he's uh, chunking the Jester really hard there. But as Ted Stickles is uh, focusing on actually not the Nexus, just killing off the minions, it looks like uh, the Jester could actually go down here, will go down to Barry Bananas. Are we going to see probably one of the bigger throws of this game? There have been a lot of them. Alistar will fall, Atomic will get slowed there and he will go down as well. Only Slushy and Talandra are alive. They are just coming back alive from being back at base. And the throws are so bad this game. Oh my goodness. It just does not stop. Yeah, this is getting pretty wild here. Um, everybody just getting caught out. One thing to note there that Twitch actually did the right thing. Leading with the Ignite, breaking his stealth with the Ignite because he knew that there was going to be a couple of heals coming. He knew that um, if MF had her summoner heal up, she was going to use it there. And then, of course, with Tarkert being right around the corner, he's going to get use that heal there as well. But yeah, just wild, man. Like, how many friggin' throws are going on? I mean, you know, that's a great word to use because they are throwing this game real, real hard right now. Although, the situation is still a 13,000 gold advantage, but they had 14,000 gold advantage, and now with the Jester disconnecting, this is going to be a big, big issue here um, because they could have ended the game at 20 minutes and that's what Lazura likes to do. And now they've given these guys hope. GG was even called and they still actually have a chance in this game, although they only have one turret. So um, it's actually kind of funny. There's so many turret, in, like every turret is down except for that bottom lane one, which I think Slushy's looking to take care of right now. But Every turret being down, you should have a huge advantage, way, way more than 13,000, and uh, that's not the case right now. Yeah, I, I don't even know. Like, right, what you said is true. They are down a lot of gold, a lot of kills, and a lot of turrets. So, by all rights, every single thing points to an easy peasy, you know, lemon squeezy victory for a Lazura, but they just have not been able to make it happen, whether it's a lack of coordination or just a lack of. Uh, I don't know, or an excess of skill here from Barry's Bananas. Apparently, uh, they have been eating their fruit and uh, doing some work this game as far as, you know, just hanging on by their bear teeth to the bitter end. And I'm pretty sure I screwed up some of my analogies there. But the Baron buff has just been picked up by Lazura. It looks like a DT777 is going to check that out, reveal what has been happening. And now there's the Shirelias initially pop. There's the double Shirelias. And uh, will they actually catch Galio up here? Yes, they will. He does have his Banshee's Veil, but that is actually popped by the shield. An excellent choice for the chain stun there from Scion. And actually, he will get ulted and then oh. will pop his ult. But Big Big Large Huge will be the next to fall. And surely this will be the push that will end it. I've said it so many times before, but I think this side there won't be anything that Barry's Bananas will be able to do and now the GG is called as the Nexus gets focused down. The Jester not actually autoing the Nexus like he should but there it goes and the game will finally go to Lazura. Yeah that was uh, that was a wild one. They definitely could have ended it um, 10 minutes earlier I think but I think to troll me for making them wait they made me wait every every two minutes of their time is worth 10 minutes of my time apparently because they definitely could have ended that one a lot sooner but still a very very uh dominating performance just not as dominating as i think they could have made it um as just some real real sloppiness coming out there and uh i'm curious what he has to say for himself 
uh, in, uh, or rather the team has to say for themselves, because that was really, really silly. For, for a team that could beat Curse Gaming, you would think that this would not be a problem for them, but it really didn't go as, uh, as one-sided as I would have expected.